वेलकम क्वालिटी ऑफ ड्रग्स सब्सटेंस डिपेंड अपॉन देयर इम्प्यूटी प्रोफाइल लोअर द इम्प्यूटी प्रोफाइल हायर द क्वालिटी ऑफ ड्रग्स सब्सटेंस टू चेक इम्प्यूटी प्रोफाइल ऑफ ड्रग्स सब्सटेंस सेवरल इम्प्यूटीज मे रिक्वायर्ड बट इट इज डिफिकल्ट टू एनी कंपनी टू यूज ऑल द इम्प्यूटी स्टैंडर्ड ड्यूरिंग रोटीन एनालिसिस first due to availability of mpt standard second due to cost and third due to analysis time now question is what is the solution i have very good experience in handling this issue and i am going to share my skill based knowledge in this session let us enjoy the session role of relative resonance factor rrf in pharmaceuticals analysis In this session, you will learn what are the various techniques for calculating the impurities, what are the challenges in using external standard for impurities calculation, why RRF is needed, what are the factors affecting the RRF, in which case RRF may not be considered in the calculation, in which case RRF should be considered in the Following techniques are available for calculating the impurities. First, area normalization method (AN). This is also called area percent method. Against diluted sample of main analyte (ADS), against impurity standard (AIS). This is also called external standard method. Let us consider. and api impurity chromatogram which contains three peaks out of three peaks main peak is due to api this is a and b and c are impurity peaks now question is how impurity b and c will be calculated by above method i am going to discuss in next slide an impurity is calculated by following formula percentage of an impurity is equal to area of an impurity into 100 divided by total area into rrf when rrf is 1 it will be area normalization method or area percent method when rrf having some value it will be rrf impurity b and c were calculated by Area percent method that is AN by using diluted sample that is ADS and by using impurity standard that is AIS. From result, it is clear that for impurity C, result obtained by all the three methods are similar. But for impurity B, result obtained by area normalization method and by using diluted sample is similar but the result obtained using the impurity standard is different now question a among an ads and ais method which one is correct result i am going to discuss in the next slide Result obtained by AN method and ADS method only be correct with universal detectors like ELST detector and MAS detector, and not by UV detector. For UV detector, result depends upon concentration as well as absorbance of the molecule. Absorbance of a molecule depends upon its structure as well as wavelength used as each impurity may have different wavelength maxima hence result obtained by an and ads method is not correct now question is can ais method be possible to use every time i am going to discuss in the next slide challenges in using method ais method ais needs each individual impurity standard while performing the analysis most of impurity standards are not commercially available impurity preparation or isolation and characterization is costly as well as time consuming process 
it increases the cost of the project many folds if input is highly hygroscopy or unstable in that case it is impossible to preserve and use as an external standard it also increases the analysis time many fold now question is what is the solution i am going to discuss the same in the next slide. to get read of challenges related to ais method Relative response factor RRF has been introduced. It is defined as ratio between the response factor of an input and the response factor of a mean in a light standard. Response factor is nothing but area response divided by concentration. RRF is equal to response factor of input divided by response factor of api usp uses factor f where f is equal to rrf and it is used in the denominator for the calculation harma europa use correction factor which is equal to 1 beta rrf and it is used in the numerator for the calculation Generally, in in-house method, RRF is used and it is used in denominator for calculation. Several methods are available for determination of RRF. Out of them, linearity and slope method is widely used in the industries and it is also acceptable by regulatory agencies. The relative response factor will be determined by Dividing the slope of specified input is with the slope of reference substances. There is also another tentative method that is the response and concentration. This method is used only during the development stage. In this method, RRF is calculated by area response of an input divided by area response of mean in a light. Once project is developed, after that RRF must be calculated using linearity and slope method. Linearity and slope method procedure. Prepare at least five concentrations from two stock solutions for each input as well as for mean in a light at the concentration between quantities and limit to at least 150% of the limit of input. Generate the chromatogram for each concentration for both input as well as mean in a light using the test method. Draw the linearity plot and calculate the case study. Let us consider an API in which limit of input I is not more than 0.15%. QL of the method is 0.04%. Sample operating concentration is 400 microgram per ml. Now question is how response factor of input I will be calculated. I am going to discuss in the next slide. For each analyte A and input I, solution we are prepared at different concentration from two stock solutions. At each concentration, chromatogram was generated for analyte A and input I, and linearity curve was plotted, and slope was calculated for input I as well as for analyte A, and RRF was calculated by dividing slope of input I with the slope of analyte A. In this case, RRF is 0.514 and this value will be used for calculation in the routine. In details, I am going to discuss in the next slide. This is the formula for calculation of input A. Uh, area of an input A into 100 divided by total area into RRF. Here, RRF will be used for calculating the input I. Advantages of RRF helping in giving fast and exact result of input in drug substance, drug intermediates, and drug product. 
universally acceptable for example by guidelines and by pharmacopoeia one time evaluation job and lifetime calmness avoid the stability storage and management issue with the standards reduce the analysis and project development cost drastically now question is will rra be used in the all cases i am going to discuss the same in the next slide factors affecting rrf rrf may change due to change of wavelength column brand column stationary phase especially particle size detector for example uv and pd detector solvent grade buffer concentration column temperature ph variation flow rate now question is what about the rrf of isomeric impurities i am going to discuss in next slide it is a general assumption that rrf of isomeric impurity will be one but it is not always true in this case rrf is not equal to one because a spectrum maxima different for isomer compared to analyte now question is what about the rrf of input is having huge difference in the absorbance i am going to discuss in the next slide rrf and variation in absorbance in these cases there is a huge difference in rrf at a particular concentration and wavelength each have different absorbance now question is whether in above cases rrf should be used or not i am going to discuss in the next slide conditions for rrf consideration rrf between 0.8 and 1.2 should be considered as one and may not be used for calculation rrf below 0.8 should be expressed with two significant numbers the rrf of less than 0.2 or more than 5 should not be used now question is can rrf of unspecified impurity be calculated or not think over it and write your answer in the comment section that is all about this session please write at least one of your learnings in the comment section If you are new on this channel then subscribe the channel and like the video let us see you soon in the next session thank you for watching the lecture